best understand the musical concept, we should look at it from several angles. So here, let's take the diatonic modes and look at them from the perspective of rotation, brightness voice leading, and reflection. Our first question might and should be, why are there modes at all? To understand this, let's look at this challenge. Imagine a circle with 12 nodes and your job is to place seven points along it, wherever you like, but as evenly spread as possible, so as far apart from each other as you can make them. If you run this through, you'll find that if you place one here, slowly fill this up, what you create is a major pentatonic cycle. If you want to add two more, you should place them as far away from each other as you can. And here we have the diatonic scale and by association the pentatonic. And that is why this thing exists. This pattern you've created is Euclidean and maximally even. That means that those seven points in 12 are grouped together as fairly as they can be. There's no big gaps and that they are spread across in space as much as possible. You might have heard this term in respect to rhythms, but it's equally applicable here in terms of scales. It does in fact have another property, this diatonic cycle. If we rotate it, you'll notice that it never lines up until we get back to the beginning again. This is a property known as maximal independence. That's why we have seven modes. Maximal independence is not a property of all scales. The whole tone scale, for example, only has one mode. The octatonic has two, but the diatonic scale has seven. And that's why we have seven different vastly contrasting sounds from this one cycle. So the modes are normally understood through this rotation aspect. And that gives us the modes in the order that we all memorize or try and memorize. Have you ever wondered why such an order? It seems so mixed up and almost arbitrary, making it harder to absorb. Why do we get a familiar one and then a darker one, and an extremely dark one, and the brightest one that there is? In fact, if we reconfigure them in order of brightness, we can think of these objectively in terms of how many sharps or flats they would have comparatively, but also subjectively and intuitively how they feel. Everyone comes up with this order with the dreamy Lydian at the top and the dark Locrian at the bottom. This groups the three majors together, which will share a major pentatonic, the three minors, which will share a minor pentatonic, and then the odd one out, the diminished at the bottom. If you've seen a previous video of mine, you'd be familiar with this view, which explains this brightness order. If we place them here in the circle of fifths, you'll see that the order of brightness makes perfect sense. Lydian, Ionian, Mixolydian, Tilocrian. But why? Here's one way of looking at that I just this morning worked out. Lydian essentially stacks perfect fifths together. So in this viewpoint, we have an order of perfect fifths going this way, and all seven notes are done. Inherent, of course, is the fact that there is this sort of tritone break that occurs. But the Lydian is hidden from that because it just stacks up in fifths. However, these other modes, there's a sort of tritone shadow that spreads across. Look at it this way. If Lydian has all the brighter scale degrees, what happens if we start moving the implied root clockwise? What happens is now, from C to F, that sharp and fourth is flattened. There's a shadow cast by that tritone. And this continues through all the modes, one by one, 
dropping one of these scale degrees. Until ultimately, all seven of them have been dropped from their Lydian starting point. I find this stunningly beautiful, this ordering from light to dark. These are the scale degrees that move and here's another way of visualizing it. If we imagine we have Lydian here with all the degrees at major augmented positions for the fourth and moving to Ionian, sharp four goes down to four. Mixolydian, the seventh drops. Dorian, the third. Aeolian, the sixth. Phrygian, second. And Locrian, the fifth drops. We have now dropped all of the scale degrees, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But one remains, the root. And if we drop that from Locrian, we do in fact get the Lydian pattern again, from which the cycle can continue. There is one more perspective to look at, that of reflection. This is something I discovered in Persichetti's 20th century harmony, and it blew my mind. Here are again the modes in order of brightness. Lydian at the top, Locrian at the bottom. There is one further way in which all these modes are connected. If we take Lydian, this pattern of whole and half steps, and mirror them around C, going up a step, we go down a step, and so on. Lydian, the brightest mode, becomes Locrian, the darkest. Some kind of fluke, surely, but if we take Ionian, the same pattern, the next brightest mode becomes the next darkest. And again, Mixolydian becomes Aeolian. That's six of the seven, so what remains? Dorian. And Dorian becomes itself. It's a palindromic mirror scale. Really, Instead of saying middle C, we should say middle D. The piano, after all, is a mirror form. So here we now have a palette of bright to dark colours that we can draw on in our compositional artistry. All these perspectives I managed to get to just one diagram the modal compass, which gives you multiple ways of navigating these modes. A Danish theorist, composer and vocalist called Sky Lofander noticed the diagram and made this far prettier version. And it in fact embeds all of these concepts in one simple image. You'll notice that there's reflection points around the centre with a Dorian palindrome represented. So these circles of half and whole steps are perfectly reflected down the centre point with Dorian as the palindrome. Not only that, but the standard layout of rotation is shown in the central star. Ionian to Dorian to Phrygian to Lydian to Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian and back to Ionian in either direction. Voice leading is shown, that minor third, major third, minor seven, major seven pattern, and so on until it wraps around in yet another cycle. And these all laid out in a pattern of dark to bright, another way around the compass. So this gives you multiple ways of navigating the diatonic modes, conceiving them and composing with them. You might ask, do other modal groups have this quality? Is there a reflection to the melodic minor modes and what lies at the palindromic centre? All of this will be uncovered as we continue our journey. <laughs>